Good day, viewers. Welcome to another edition of Cancer with Dr. Denise Ejo, CEO of Common Cancer Foundation, in partnership with Plus TV Africa. June is Cancer Survivors Month, which is another international another international event to raise awareness of cancer survivors, sufferers, and their experiences today. Today, we'll narrow in on chronic lymphatic leukemia and the role of an NGO in making a difference. And in the house, who have I got? I have got Prof. Nora Olubumi Akiola, who I will be speaking to about different aspects of the role of the NGOs. Hello, Prof. How are you? Hello, Dr. Denise. Thank you How very you? much for inviting me. Nice to see your face again. Happy to be here. Thank you very much. Prof. is a medical doctor from the University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University and a trained doctor in internal medicine and pathology, which is known as hematology. Prof obtained a PhD in UK in 1992 and became a consultant physician hematologist, then now a professor of hematology. Mustard Seed Health Awareness Initiative was established as a, as a Mustard Seed Support Network as a non-governmental, non-political, non-profit making charity organization of multidisciplinary healthcare professionals that provide care and support services to people living with chronic illnesses, communicable and non-communicable diseases, particularly immunodeficiency conditions, such as HIV infection, tuberculosis, sickle cell, and cancer. Mustard Seed has received um, grants, many grants and awards, some of which include the US aid, US aid for the NECAIN project, which was in 19 in 2008 to 2010, Global, Global Fund Tuberculosis Program Grant, which was also received in 2019 to 2020, TED Fund NRF for the immunohistochemical, you know, medical people have very long words molecular and cytogenetic characterization of some cancers in Southwest Nigeria. It's a community awareness component. And the IWCLL, now IW is a small letter, so I, Prof will explain that to us as we go along, a grant for the characterization of CLL in Southwest Nigeria care and clan support group information component, which is ongoing. Welcome, Prof. And the first question I'm going to ask you, before we even start going far, before I understand all this confusion, all this, uh, all this acronyms, acronyms. Too many long words. Yeah. Exactly. So first day, what is CLL, please? CLL is chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Oh, so I was right. Oh, wow. Yes, Clap for yourself, right. Denise. Right. Oh, my yes. goodness. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm not doing too badly. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Bob, for helping me with that. You see, one of the things yes. I always own up to is I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a PhD holder yeah. in education. Yeah. And I talk about cancer as a survivor, somebody living with the disease. So welcome, Prof, to this edition of our program, and thank you for agreeing to join us. So here we go. Now let's have a talk for all of you watching us online. My name is Denise Edger, the CEO of Commonwealth Cancer Foundation. Let's go. What do the following two words mean? Immunohistochemical. I think that is immuno immuno chemical, uh, chemistry. Yeah. I think that's what I think because I always hear this is to chemistry. And then the chronic lymphatic leukemia. Can you tell us briefly what those two first mean? Because without an understanding of that, the whole work you do will not be yes. seen. Immunohistochemistry is the um, characteristics of the lymphocytes that you know accumulate to form this disease that we call chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Now, these cells have certain markers on them that determine the type of immune um, uh, activity they may have. And we see that in the lab. We use those to, to identify the cells and use those characteristics to determine 
whether indeed it is CLL or any other lymphoma. Uh, lymphomas are um, solid tumors that are associated with the immune system. Okay. And the immune system consists of uh, various organs, the lymph nodes, the bone marrow, the spleen, you know, and any of these areas can be affected when you're talking about lymphoma. So the cells themselves, which are the lymphocytes, now these lymphocytes, they migrate from the bone marrow into the thymus, and then they mature, and then they, they go into the peripheral blood, and they function to um, help people to fight infection and improve, I mean, to fight any uh, organism or any agent that is foreign to the body. So they work to try and keep an individual in a healthy state, and they constitute the main cells of the immune system. So basically, I'm going to speak it in ordinary man's terms. But what I, because one thing that is, is key in my head that I, I keep hearing is leukemia. I, I've always understood leukemia. Now, I will go back to why leukemia is key for me. My mother died of leukemia. My grandmother died of leukemia. And leukemia, to me, is cancer of the blood. That's right, right? Correct. And then they, they break down into different components. Yes. Different. All right, then, thank you. Let's just stop there. Let me not even go and start getting myself in a twist before we go and get ourselves confused. Okay, so can you give us briefly um, an outline of what and who Mustard Seed Initiative is? is? Who are you? What, what, what is your project about? And what, what is the benefit to us as um, any cancer space? Right. Mustard Seed Health Awareness Initiative started as Mustard Seed Support Network. But when we were to register in 2013 with CAC, the, the word network was rejected. So we had to change the name to Mustard Seed Health Awareness Initiative. And uh, we've been working um, in the area of care and support for people with chronic illnesses. And as we've said clearly, that this includes um, people who are living with um, HIV infection, um, sickle cell disease, tuberculosis, and cancer. And uh, as we've said, chronic lymphocytic leukemia is a cancer, and, and cancers are lifelong conditions, basically. And that means the people who suffer from cancer will need certain um, care and support services. And that is what Mustard Seed Health Awareness Initiative is, is um, involved in doing. And to do this, we, we have, we go out um, to uh, the community, basically. Uh, we conduct outreaches to sensitize the community about cancer. And for example, this was the flyer that we, we produced um, to, to celebrate World Cancer Day on the Ted Fund project. You can see Ted Fund written on there. And you can see some pictures of certain swellings on the jaw and other places. So to depict um, malignancies, that is cancer of the blood and uh, some solid tissue. And it includes also breast cancer, prostate cancer. As you know, breast cancer is the most common cancer um, known to women all over the world. And prostate cancer uh, is the most common for males all over the world. So that's... Leukemia, which is blood cancer, is not so common. Likewise, the lymphoma component. So we call them lymphoproliferative diseases. Uh, they're not so common, but they are becoming more uh, important because of the population at risk. Um, it's usually uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia is usually a disease of the elderly. But we have found that in Africans, there, uh, there's a bimodal you know, uh, presentation. That is, you have a group of patients who are younger, uh, that is, I mean, around 40, 50, even some 30 year olds have been reported to have chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is supposed to be a leukemia of uh, elderly. Um, and we also observe that the presentation of chronic lymphocytic leukemia 
in Nigerians and Africans generally is somewhat different from the way um, it presents in Caucasians. So there's diversity. And this is what this um, project that we are about to embark on, that is, uh, that is being funded now by W. IWCL, that is International Workshop for Chronic uh, Lymphocytic Leukemia. So that's what IW stands for, is the International Workshop. And they have been um, very generous to fund a project that um, uh, was brought up, we brought up in our, uh, in our department in um, the teaching hospital, OAU teaching hospital. And uh, there's a component that involves uh, the community um, outreach and support for uh, the patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And this is where mustard seed comes in. Uh, it was in 2017 that mustard seed became a member of the CLLAN um, uh, network organization that is CLLAN is Chronic Lymphocytic uh, Leukemia Advocate Network. It's an international network that um, incorporates, that works with NGOs all over the world. And Mustard Seed supports, that is not Mustard Seed uh, Health Awareness Initiative, is the first NGO to be incorporated or to, be, uh, to collaborate with uh, LLAN in giving care and support to people uh, who are living with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Now, this project is going to enable us to reach out to people more. And in, not only in the area, that is, we have a support group for our patients here uh, since uh, 2019. Um, but we will be able now because we have funding to be able to reach out to um, patients across the Southwest, at least as an initial um, intervention. Um, and it is a project that will be lasting for three years. And after that, depending on the um, outcomes and the, um, the, uh, the success of the project, there will be um, a scale up of this to other parts of Nigeria. You have explained to us so far how where you are with the project and the fact that it's, it's a Southwest project, which will bring me back to a question, but I want you to finish because I want you to explain for us, please, the, um, imp the benefits of this project to the patients because it's, a, it's an advocacy stand. We're not, we're not talking about the medical. We're talking about the mental yes. care that comes with um, this journey. And, you know, for me who lives with the disease, you know that I talk about it. It's just very hard. So can you please talk us through that, please? So it's the care, the word the of care, care the support, care and support, words yes. that have come up. And the, that are yes, exactly. The essence of this project is to um, try and improve the care and support for our clients. We call them clients in the community. Um, and what NGOs do is to do what doctors don't have the time to do in their clinics, and that is to give care and support. The care uh, comes from the, the, the concern that a, volunteer, a community volunteer has to help a client in need, basically. And we're saying that with the concern comes passion, passion to give care. And um, there is a need to affirm that relationship with the client. So we need to get the confidence of, of the client so that they will be able to um, cooperate with the care um, provider in the community and they will be able to open up and tell um, the, the, the volunteer, the community volunteer, their, their challenges, their needs and aspirations as uh, the outcome of the disease, because it's a lifelong disease. It's 
Once diagnosed, you live with it for life. Okay. So they, along the line, there is need, therefore, for us to ensure that the, the, the community volunteers respect the clients and uh, they are able to encourage them. So that is the care side of it. The support side is that this NGO and other NGOs work together to provide services like nutritional support, financial support, um, psychosocial support, religious support, you know. So these are the support services that we try to give our clients. And that is where support group service I and mean, the support groups are important. Uh, they, because the doctors don't have time to provide these services, the, the NGO will coordinate the support groups, encourage the, uh, the patients to attend the support groups, and then they'll be able to meet with other members of, uh, of the team, that is of the department or the clinic, who have the similar, the same type of disease, that is who are also suffering from I mean, not, um, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, who are also suffering from CLL, all right? As I said, it's, the support group is for any condition that is a chronic illness. So as I said before, it can be for sickle cell disease, it can be for uh, diabetes, hypertension, cancer. So all chronic diseases uh, should have support groups for their, um, their patients. And they will be able to meet with other patients who have similar disease and who can share their experiences during the time frame of the support group. Can I, okay, so now listening to you, it's, it's, it's interesting because when you think about the support group and you think about the wide um, group of people you are catering for, Yes. This project now is is it catering for all the groups or are, or have you got a part where you know we need to at least cater for 100 people who have cancer in the southwest and see how they are progressing. The reason I'm asking it is because cancer on its own comes with all those key variables that you have mentioned in this cycle social um ways that we live. And a lot of people assume that they understand, and it's an assumption. And a lot of the time, cancer patients will run away from what you are describing, not because they want to, but because they feel that, you know what, I'm not, I'm not, I, I can't deal with this. You know, it's not, you know. Financially, I don't have it. Emotionally, no. Do you don't understand? And it's not because they want to, but because they have to. So I'm asking in the sense that you've got a plan, you've got you've got the process, you've got the group of people that you are targeting. Uh, they are, and we are the most vulnerable, I think, in society where medical help is concerned. So now, what do what is your how's your way forward with that particular small group? Okay, as you said, it's a small group. Because the prevalence of I'm looking CLL, at the cancer, that's why I said that. There's yeah. a CLL, yes. Yeah. Um, it's a rare condition in this part of the world. So we're targeting, like, say, seven to ten patients per year per center. We're looking at um, enrolling uh, about seven to ten patients from each center across the southwest. So we're okay. talking about... Um, doctors, hematologists who are looking after CLL in all the states in the southwest. This is six states in the southwest region. So we're looking and, at uh, six. I want to do some over a period of two years. Mm -hmm. okay. so I want to do some more because I believe that this program will help us to help those who have the disease. Some of them will come out because they can't come act. Out. They yes. need the support. They don't have. Yes. yes. So let us exactly. look at it. So how many? So how many communities? So it's not seven per state. It's seven per center. Which which will uh, center exactly a referral center? You know, patients are referred to yes. hematologists. Yes. So on the average, exactly. So there are people in the community who don't even know they have CLL because. It, many times it doesn't show up with symptoms for a long time. 
you know, and they don't get to know that they have anything wrong with them until they begin to feel Very sick, that they, they start getting tired because of the anemia, or they begin to see some lumps, some lymph nodes, you know, showing up in the, in the neck or the axilla, or maybe the spleen is getting larger. So these are the, some of the symptoms and that they may experience that will bring them to the hospital. What we're saying now is we want people to come and just do a blood test, which we call the full blood counts. Yeah. All right. And that won't cost much. It varies from 2,000, 2,500, wherever you go around Nigeria. And let everybody who is 40 years and above do this at least once in two or three years. Okay. So and now I'm going to ask you check. the next question. Mm -hmm. So based on that, and you said 2,500. And yes. you have an NGO. Does your NGO have funding for us to put this out? It is or to do require for them to do the blood test because, because yeah, because that, for people. that's what drives them first and foremost. People, mm -hmm. I don't want to know. If I don't have the money, why do I want to know? Mm -hmm. um, well, it's going to be expensive if you ask everybody in the community to come and do a full blood. No, count. no, no. I'm not saying we don't. That. We don't have we don't have funds for that. But what we do have funds for is to help those who have been diagnosed to have CLL, all right, to support them within the support group and also to enable them to do some tests while they come to the clinic. We will okay. be able to support them with some funds to do that and also to encourage them to, to attend support groups. We'll give them some funds for transportation and refreshment and things like that during the support group. Yes, okay, so there is funding now, for that. Awesome. So I'm going to put this out now to communities and to health professionals, and we're going to put it out. So if you can, please, at the end of this, share us uh, whatever flyer or whatever you've got that we can put out yes. to, to share so that um, for the medics, because it has to go into the medical space, it's not we, the patients, don't really know, yes. and you are the only ones that can identify your target audience. But we've got to get this message to the medics that this facility is available. And so if you can share that with us. We want exactly. to thank you very much. And I'm going to ask you one last question. And it's very brief, but I need you to answer this. If you had a wish list, okay. what would you okay. like <laughs> to see that impacts this social change? Because I see this as a social change project, right? Nationally, because yes. currently it's targeted as Southwest. So Southwest is three That's years. Right. So three years is a long time if we do not try to find a way to get it across the country. Because it's a small group of people, it's easier to find help for a smaller group of people than um, big groups. And this is a small group and currently is on Southwest, but we need to get it across. So your wish list, let me go very quick. Nationally, one. As an NGO one, so something you want the NGOs to do for you to help right. us through this. Two, and the last one is for us or the community, everybody at large. Um, yeah, what do you want from us? Okay, just to say before I tell you what I would wish, that there is an NGO called Siskanen in Nigeria. This is the civil society. Uh, organization, I mean, association or society for uh, eradication of cancer in Nigeria. Okay. And um, this is not being supported uh, adequately. Uh, it's not been supported adequately by government. We need government to support the work of this NGO across so the So that's the wish list. That is number one. Okay. That's uh -huh. number one. And uh, number two, I, the, I would recommend that um, if, if possible, the, the national, um, the, the Senate puts out uh, uh, an act or something that would enable, um, that would enable uh, some support under the national health insurance to support uh, cancer or you know treatment of uh, CLL in Nigeria. As I said, it's a rare it's a rare cancer. It's not like the solid tumors like the breast, the prostate, the colon. You know, uh, but 
we would like uh, government to put on the NA, uh, NHIS um, list uh, support for the drugs for these patients because they're very expensive. They're very expensive drugs. And um, it's, it, most of our patients can't afford the standard regimen for this, for this um, condition. So that's my second wish list. That is one that government funds NGOs through CISCANEN. And then two, that NHIS would recognize the need to support uh, patients with uh, CLL and in, in ex by extension, uh, patients who have hematological malignancies, that is cancers of the blood. CLL is just a portion, right? We have a, a sister arm, which is the CML arm, and that is, is the chronic myelocytic leukemia, which is more common in Nigeria than CLL. Uh, OAU THC is the hub for that in Nigeria, and all patients come once referred to Ilefe to receive free treatments with very expensive targeted drugs, all right, for their, for their treatment. Okay, and so this uh, has been supported by international agencies. The Max Foundation has been very kind to us since 20, 2002. Uh, we've been receiving treatments free of charge for all patients with CML. And the drug is so expensive, but the patients get it free of charge. And this is Thank what we also like to have happen for CLL as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for your three requests. And for me as a cancer survivor, I'd like to say once again, Common Cancer Foundation is an awareness NGO. We create awareness. We open opportunities for discussion on the different cancers in Nigeria and opportunities for us as Nigerians. So I want to say a very big thank you to you, Prof, for sharing this. And I think there's a conversation we're going to have to keep going back to. For me, leukemia is very real and I would want to see it rediscussed when we come into um, Leukemia Month. So you know that, trust me, we'll come back to this conversation. Maybe I'll get a panel of you at yes. that. So I want to say a very yes. big thank you. Thank you, our yes. viewers, for oh participating and, in, and engaging with us. You can follow us on Common Cancer Foundation, our, so, our social media platforms. Um, we are on LinkedIn. I think we're LinkedIn as Denise Edjo. You can find Common Cancer Foundation or you can find us on Twitter. I'm still there. I just want to say to you, thank you for following us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being um, um, active in giving us feedback. And we want to ask you, send in your comments, send in information, share what you're, you're hearing, subscribe, like. All our videos are on Common Cancer Foundation YouTube. And this will be going live on that there as well. We want to thank you once again. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, have a fantastic week. And to all of us, happy Cancer Survivors Month.